But I was very proud, and I still am, of my, my, my service with uh, Air America. And I'm glad that, that the uh, agency finally chose to, to admit that, yes, we were part of them. And in fact, uh, uh, at one time they wouldn't, and now they do. And all the projects basically were for the military, and then uh, working, finally realizing Air America, you know, and working for, with the government. There was an awful lot of anti-aircraft fire along the trail, and of course the uh, Nimrod B-26s from NKP were, uh, and, and the ADs that were, had been given to the Air Force were trying to knock out the guns, so we were sitting up there watching the whole thing. And at that time, why it was uh, to relay information along the Ho Chi Minh Trail uh, to a radio platform very high, would keep track of the influx of uh, all the traffic and through the jungles and the cars and into the plains, and uh, they did it mostly at night. The fellows uh, that were stuck along the trail, hidden, had a little radio transmitters, and they, it, they made it simple for them to count trucks and troops and bicycles, whatever, and they pushed the button with the number and it would come up and we would hear a little song that went, a hunting you will go, a hunting you will go, hi ho the Dario, a hunting, well whenever we heard that, it was a message coming through us back. And the more of those hunting we will go, the more business we got. Uh, lots of times we didn't know what each other did and we didn't ask. Air America's uh, Volpar ended up getting the, some of the best pictures we were told because we knew the country like the back of our hand. We saw it and got pictures of it through the clouds and that was the beginning of the famous Chinese road. I remember going up and shooting the Golden Triangle, the largest poppy fields in the world. Beautiful, it's like those flowers. And that's, and they, that's where it all came from. You say, oh boy, we're getting it. And, and he could see the puffs coming behind us. They were walking up. And uh, fortunately he saw them, so we just break off. Why, when they'd shoot at us, they'd use tracers, and we could tell if they were leading us right. And whenever it looked like they were, we'd just turn. There's a huge hole in the back uh, where it had been hit, and the tail, it looked like, I was afraid, the, co the control cables, because it, it was uh, metal control cables, it wasn't hydraulic. I escorted him back to Udorn, and, and uh, that, that's when Jim uh, Ryan uh, got hit and lost his leg. But He's an unbelievable man. He came, bounced back, and within a year, he was flying again. We did have tragedy, and it was to be expected, but it always hurts when it's somebody you know. That's all, folks. We were just going into areas and put, uh, dropping people or dropping things to people that were already on the ground that, in areas that were... Uh, way behind the enemy lines. <laughs> I think you kind of get pumped up on adrenaline and you just want to see if you can get it in and get the load where it's needed and get out without getting hit. Got the I got the stuff in. in there. I got the rocket launchers and the machine guns in there, two of them in one piece, and got out, which yeah. I thought was kind of important to get out, you know. It's very frustrating not being able to shoot back. You're flying around low and slow in an unarmed airplane. The jet guys, you know, they talk about, well, you know, we got all this stuff. And like, yeah, but you're not down there dropping at 60 or 80 knots at 300 feet either. A F-4 or two and a couple of T-28 shot down that day. And the, the guys on the ground were getting pounded with artillery. I mean, they were just getting pounded. And it was very heavily defended with radar-controlled anti-aircraft guns. They had uh, 27, at least 27 radar control, 57 millimeter guns around there. A couple of other birds came out, and they, that guy was just, I mean, he was surrounded by an entire battalion. And they tried to get down to him, and one got down in, on, the, on the right side of the other one, which is where the door was, and the guy had gotten out and was slumped over the wheel on the right side with the back of his head blown off. So we didn't get him. And they could, I mean, they were shooting the stew out of these guys. We had uh, some Thai helicopter gunships that were supposed to be supporting them. <laughs> nah, they never went down through 10,000 feet. 
Yeah, we didn't have any we didn't have any F fours or anything like that backing us up. And the guys risked their butt to try to get him and didn't get him and we were criticized for it. So somebody we could get we could hear somebody going down, everybody stopped what they're doing and tried to get him. That's what you did. We had a whole wall with plaques, just full of plaques in the bar and you know, just from different Air Force units or whatever in appreciation for us picking their pilots up. But you never hear about that. Thank you.